Inviting Client Feedback with Sandra Collins and Gina Coe. We're going to briefly talk about client feedback and some of the ways in which we, um, in our own practices, have worked with clients to ensure that we're actively involved in collaboration and inviting their feedback all the way along through the counseling process. Right, Sandra, and um, that, that's, that is really important in terms of continuously collaborating, um, you know, starting from the informed consent process, right? The, the beginning, uh, the limits to confidentiality, explaining that well, clearly, making sure that they have a chance to ask questions. And then the, the, um, the ethic of care where um, sometimes, you know, I might assume, oh, I'm being very helpful. <laughs> The client is we're doing the the things I suggest, and all these you know things that may seem to me it's working, working, and it's really important to check in on that, right? Um, informally, formally. So, so maybe Sandra, do you want to talk about at the micro scale level how you do that? Yeah, so I think um, you've given us a good lead into some of that because I'm thinking about the skill of transparency that we focused on at the beginning, which is about really um, making clear what it is that we're doing in the moment and what we're inviting clients into in the moment, which connects to the idea of continuous informed consent. And so being able to say to a client, here's what I'm thinking in the moment, and I'm wondering about this as a potential direction. And then that's transparency and then perception checking. So um, how does that fit for you is a way of then continually inviting clients to give feedback and um, attending to what's working, what's not working for them. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking about the skill of um, immediacy because there's times when I might think I have this great idea about where we want to go and I share something with a client or I reflect back something that I think I'm perceiving from the client and I can see the client go, you know, or some other body embodied reaction. And it's really important then to stop and say, I just noticed that when I said that you kind of moved back in your chair and sometimes I will mirror that um, movement as well just to kind of make it clear to the client in part as part of the immediacy and then invite them to um, explain to me what's happening in the moment. So, so the immediacy is, I, this is what I'm noticing in your reaction and then inviting them through a question or a probe to tell me a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as you're saying this, Sandra, I'm thinking about um, kind of mid-session check-in, right? Some, I would say maybe use something like, so, you know, we're, we're in the middle of our, our second session. How has it been for you so far? Did you come to talk about what you wanted to talk about? Um, is there a, a specific topic you want to also explore today? Because we have enough, half a session left, right? To, to use that kind of the time um, structure and to check in there. And, and most often than not, clients will say, actually, Gina, I also came to talk about this. I'm glad you are asking this question, right? And then sometimes in terms of a informal check-in after two or three or four sessions, I would say something like, we've been together for three, four sessions now. I want to, I want to hear from you. How has it been so far? What's been beneficial, helpful, maybe what hasn't been so much, right? And I find clients who, when we've built a strong therapeutic alliance relationship, they feel comfortable. They will tell me, they will say, you know, Gina, that TED talk you said you asked me to watch the, the last time, I appreciate that, but it didn't really speak to me. Uh, it, it's not fitting right. And then they'll tell me how come, right? And then we'll go from there. When clients can say that to me, I so appreciate it. Because again, it shows that they are trusting of our, 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 our time together and able to be honest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then when you talked about the immediacy piece, Sandra, sometimes, yeah, I notice there's some something going on for the client that doesn't seem to fit with them. Mm -hmm. That's important to explore as well. Then. And one of the other uh, micro skills I was thinking about as you were talking about the mid-session um, check-in with clients is how valuable it is to summarize. 
Mm-hmm. So to not just keep going on and on and on, but to actually stop, summaries kind of create a bit of a break where you can say, all right, so now we've kind of talked about these themes. These are the ones that seem to be emerging. And then it's important to, after a summary to also check and say, so how does that fit with your perception in terms of the way that I pulled that together? But also what's missing in here? What haven't we touched on that you think is important? And I think that that's kind of synthesizing using a summer, summary and then following up with that question that you suggested about what's missing, what haven't we touched on? Um, you know, you came with these particular ideas uh, and we've talked about a lot of things, but it's quite possible that I've forgotten something that you said at the beginning that was really important. And so I think making all of that transparent to clients is important. Mm-hmm. And I just want to add, um, Sandra, um, I, I've taught GCAP 671 for, for seven years, two years as an ISF, a TA, and then five years as an instructor, right? Every summer when I go back to, um, before, when I go back to Eastside to, to see clients, I, I drop them the summarizing, you know, the skill of summarizing, questioning, probing, all those skills. Um, even in the more effective way, right? Because I'm teaching it, I'm living it. So I noticed that even seasoned therapists can do, can benefit from continuously being intentional about, okay, how does, what is summarizing? What is that about? How do I ask a question that's clear and more open, mm-hmm. et cetera, right? So I just want to share that with everyone because it's been so many years of, of, um, of, of instructing this course and I find it continuously to be beneficial. Mm-hmm. And one of the places where um, I find it particularly beneficial is when I get stuck in a conversation. And then I can default back to, okay, here's what's going on in this moment. Yeah. And um, what skills are useful for me to check in with this person, um, to get feedback from them, to see what's happening for them so that we can figure out how to best move forward. Because often when I feel stuck, it's because we've gotten out of sync in our collaboration, something's not aligning. And so um, that opportunity to draw on these skills and um, step back and think, okay, how can I get feedback from this other person and uh, move forward? Mm -hmm. 